Hey folks, welcome back to another video on the Decision Desk HQ YouTube channel. I'm Ryan Guest, Elections Data Fellow here at DDHQ, and I know it may be hard to believe, but the first votes of the 2024 presidential election cycle are set to be counted and released on Monday, January 15th, as the Iowa Republican caucuses are set to get underway at around 7 p.m. local time in the central time zone which is 8 p.m. Eastern. Voting is expected to start around 7.20 p.m. local time, and we are likely to get our first results soon thereafter. Now, it's no secret that caucusing is a unique process, to say the least, and one that confuses many. Rather than showing up sometime between polls opening and closing on election day and voting in private booths like in almost every other state, as the clock strikes 7 in Iowa, Republican voters across the Hawkeye state will be standing around in schools, churches, public libraries, or even individuals' houses, and assembling into groups based on whichever candidate they choose to support. With that in mind, caucusing is a public process where a given voter's choice of candidate is easily observable to both friends and neighbors. Candidates themselves have to ensure that their campaigns have a precinct captain at every location, whose job it is to organize supporters at said location and attempt to persuade other voters to back their candidate. At the end of the night, voters will list their pick for the GOP presidential nomination. The results of this vote decide what proportion of the 40 RNC delegates each candidate receives. For example, if a candidate receives exactly 50% of the statewide popular vote across every caucus site, they would theoretically receive 20 delegates, while a candidate receiving 25% of the vote would receive 10, and so on. Unlike in many other Republican primaries though across the country, there is no minimum threshold or percentage required for a presidential contender to receive delegates from Iowa's caucuses. In the 2016 Republican caucuses, five different candidates, each receiving less than 5% of the popular vote, received a delegate each. Now, if this all sounds outdated and overly confusing, you're not alone. The Iowa caucuses have come under some intense scrutiny in recent years by members of both parties, as well as the media, more so now than ever after the fiasco that was the 2020 Iowa Democratic caucuses, in which numerous irregularities were revealed, including disputed caucus totals and a complete failure to publish official results for nearly a week. As far as results go, though, 2024's Republican presidential candidates are mostly jockeying for bragging rights here. Iowa will ultimately award less than 2% of all of the available GOP delegates by the time of the convention in late summer, but winning the first in the nation state can theoretically deliver a shot of momentum to the victor, both in terms of positive media coverage and in later primary results as the standings from the Iowa caucuses will be the first sign for many less politically attentive GOP primary voters as to which candidates have a realistic chance of winning the nomination. With that said, the Iowa caucuses themselves have traditionally served as a measure of candidate support among social conservatives and especially evangelical Christians. The victories of social conservatives Mike Huckabee, Rick Santorum, and Ted Cruz in the 2008, 2012, and 2016 Iowa caucuses, respectively, were credited to their strong support among these voters. According to CNN's entrance polls in 2016, 65% of Republican caucusgoers in Iowa self-identified as evangelical or born-again Christians, with Senator Cruz garnering the support of 34% of such voters, compared to Trump's 22% and Rubio's 21%. Voters who did not identify with either of these religious groups, on the other hand, showed preference toward Trump and Rubio, as they received 29% and 26%, respectively, compared to Cruz's 18%. Cruz, of course, ended up winning those caucuses with 28% of the statewide popular vote, 
to Trump's 24% and Rubio's 23%. That said, and on that note, after Trump managed to wrap up the nomination later on in the Republican calendar, his campaign's perceived vulnerabilities among these traditionally religious conservative groups played a major role in the selection of then-governor of Indiana Mike Pence to be his running mate in 2016. An evangelical himself, Pence was believed to have strong ties to this demographic. Now, of course, one of the big questions coming into 2024's caucuses was whether Trump would manage to hold on to the favor he had gained with religious conservatives as president, or whether Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, or another opponent of his could tap into this demographic as a means to pull off an upset. Polling, however, leading up to this contest has shown a strong shift in favor of Trump, with the former president garnering real strength among Republicans who self-identify as, quote, very conservative, a block of the electorate that he had struggled with in Iowa eight years ago. An NBC News Des Moines Register Mediacom poll released in late December showed Trump had 51% of evangelical Christian support among likely Iowa Republican caucus goers, while Ron DeSantis received 26% and Nikki Haley received 12%. All of this being said, Iowa's caucuses have not proven themselves to be very good indicators of who the eventual nominee will be. From 1976 to 2016, only three out of eight Iowa Republican caucus winners went on to win the nomination. Taking a look here at each of the contested Republican Iowa caucuses since 1976 in terms of vote share, in 1976, Gerald Ford beat Ronald Reagan by a narrow three-point margin, 45.3% to 42.5% in Iowa, and went on to win the nomination. Then, in 1980, George H. W. Bush beat Reagan by a similarly narrow margin, 32 to 30% in Iowa, but went on to lose the nomination to Reagan. Eight years later, H. W. came in last in Iowa with 19% of the vote, behind Bob Dole at 37% and Pat Robertson at 25%, but went on to win the nomination by a wide margin. Then in 1996, again eight years later, Bob Dole came first in Iowa with 26% in a tightly contested race, ahead of Pat Buchanan, Lamar Alexander, and Steve Forbes. Dole, of course, went on to win the nomination comfortably. Then at the beginning of the 21st century, George W. Bush came in first in Iowa in 2000 with 41%, ahead of Steve Forbes and notably John McCain, who placed fifth, and Bush would go on to cruise to the nomination. And in 2008, after eight years of Bush in office, Mike Huckabee came first in Iowa with 34%, ahead of Mitt Romney and Fred Thompson. John McCain came in fourth place in Iowa with 13%, but went on to win the nomination to face Barack Obama. In 2012, Rick Santorum narrowly beat Romney in the statewide popular vote by less than 40 votes, with 24.56% to Romney's 24.53%. Romney, though, went on to win the nomination. Finally, in 2016, as previously mentioned, Ted Cruz beat Trump 28-24% to in Iowa, yet Trump went on to win the nomination. So, while the winner in Iowa has actually had a less than 50% success rate of actually winning the Republican nomination, including a 0% success rate in each of the last three competitive primaries, the caucuses have historically tended to narrow the field, sometimes very significantly, down to just a few truly competitive candidates. On the Republican side, the 2012 caucuses helped narrow the race down to effectively a Romney versus Santorum contest. Similarly, Cruz's first place finish in 2016 helped narrow the primary down to a race between him and Trump, although of course Kasich and Rubio's late withdrawals prevented him from consolidating that anti-Trump vote. Notably though, in both cases, the caucus winner did not ultimately become the Republican nominee. Now, here in 2024, there are eight candidates, technically speaking, on the ballot for Iowa caucus goers to decide from. 
Only six of those candidates, though, are what we would refer to as major candidates, so to speak, in terms of polling, fundraising, and endorsements. Former President Donald Trump, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, former South Carolina Governor and former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley, entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who suspended his campaign on Wednesday but will remain on the ballot, and former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson. At the time of recording this video, on the morning of Sunday, January 14th, the DDHQ slash The Hill polling average shows Trump in first place, with 52.9% of the vote in Iowa. Haley, meanwhile, has surpassed DeSantis for second place in recent weeks, as she now holds 17.9% to DeSantis's 15.5% on average while Ramaswamy is in fourth place with 7.6%. And so with that in mind, Donald Trump is very, very likely to win the Iowa caucuses this year. The only real question is by how much. In terms of endorsements, Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds, a Republican, has endorsed Ron DeSantis, while Republican Senators Chuck Grassley and Joni Ernst along with all four of Iowa's U.S. representatives, Marionette Miller-Meeks, Randy Feenstra, Ashley Hinson, and Zach Nunhave have declined to endorse. That is all, though, for this Decision Desk HQ video, though. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click that like button down below if you did indeed like the video, and subscribe to the channel while you're at it. Also, check out more content from our channel here, and as always, we'll catch you next time.